Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Been working on the all-inclusive application with uh, Entity Framework, and I've had quite a few requests for some basic link. So I thought I'd do a video about that today. Got a little extra time, so we're going to put together and we're going to put together this little video where we've got three basic link queries and talk a little bit about it. First of all, what is link? Well. Link is Language Integrated Query, L-I-N-Q. I don't know where they came up with the name, but uh, basically what it is is it's a expression that you can run against anything that implements the IEnumerable uh, interface. It has debuted in .NET 3.5, so it's been with us for quite a while. Now it, it, it kind of got off to a rocky start, but it's something that has really matured now and, and is, is just rock solid. So... It's a must to have in your tool belt and something that is well worth your time to learn. So I'm going to put this basic video out today. It's just going to be a few minutes long and uh, then hopefully get the, uh, the next one in our series, the developing a complete application using NT Framework. Get that next one pumped out tonight, maybe tomorrow. So be looking for that as well. I'd like to welcome our new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing and I ask that the rest of you who find these videos helpful, you subscribe as well. It really does help out the channel and we really do appreciate it. So without further ado, Link is not that complicated. If you can remember two things about Link, you're in business. Link is really only made of two parts and that is sequences and elements. You can think of sequences as a collection whether it be a list, a data table, as I said, anything that implements I enumerable. Elements are items within that list. For instance, as you see on my screen, a strange program running, which you haven't seen me run, it is called LinkPad. It is available at linkpad.net, and it was written by the people who wrote the C Sharp in a Nutshell series of books. It's available free. There is a $50, I believe, paid version, which I have, that gives you some advanced uh, autocorrect, which I'll show you. Uh, I highly recommend you pick it up. Every .NET developer should have, I, I believe, personally, LinkPad in their tool belt. Uh, so pick it up. Look it up, LinkPad, L-I-N-Q, PAD, and I believe it's .com, or Google LinkPad. So once you've downloaded it, come on back and finish this video, and we'll move on. So for the rest of us, we've got three queries showing on our screen, uh, three tabs, each one representing a little bit different syntax within Link. There are two basic syntax. Uh, one of them is the comprehensive query, which is also known as the query syntax, which is immediately identifiable by from something, in something, where some category, and order by, and things like that. Then there's the lambda query look, if you will, style, which is you'll see an equal sign or you'll see a parentheses dot or it's a little more C-sharp-ish looking. And then there is the hybrid, which is a mixture. You can actually mix the two. Uh, so it's important to, to, to know. Uh, so basically, let's show you what we got here. Just a basic uh, example using the same list of names I've got here. Just uh, link pad. Make sure you set it to C sharp statements so that you can run multiple statements. I'm not connected to a database. My data source is this string array of names which I put together in no particular order. Uh, although I did notice they are ordered alphabetically. That probably comes from a little bit of programmer tenure um, OCD maybe. But uh, what I do is I create an array of strings and then uh, this query I come in here and ver, you'll Everybody knows that ver keyword just means that you can get the data type at runtime and it's actually going to come back as an ienumerable list of strings. You can highlight over it. This is, I believe, part of the paid uh, subscription. You get this uh, on LinkPad. So it comes back as an ienumerable list. And we say, look, from n in names where n contains the letter a, order it by the length and select it to upper. So what we're basically saying is n is our iterator. So with n, go through names, grab the n's which contain the letter a. So we expect Anna Candy 
Dean, Mary, to be in the list. Order them by their length and convert them to upper. That's all we're doing here. That's what we're saying. It's almost in English. And then this is not link. This is link pad. This says take the collection, which is results, and dump it down here to our results window. And I'm going to run it just by hitting the play button. And there we go. Why I got that error, I had it highlighted a character. So be careful. If you do this and hit execute, it only executes that portion of code. So be careful and don't do that. Uh, make sure you don't. And we do. We get Anna, Dean, Mary, and Candy. Right? And we could have ordered them by alphabetical. There's all kinds of ordering we could have done. And you can see, I can come in here and I'm going to highlight and I'm going to hit dot. And there we go. We get all kinds of autocomplete. And that is with the paid version. So if you're not getting that, don't freak out. It just means you haven't paid for it. So I highly recommend, like I said, you get the paid version. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the comprehensive query look. Now, let's look at how we would do this very same thing in Lambda. Lambda, we've got the same list of people. We've got the same uh, runtime determination of type. And we say names.where in where in contains a order by in.length select in to upper and then dump them. This is my personal preference. Um, it, it, it really comes down to left brain, right brain, which one you like. So just make your own choice. Uh, saying the same thing and you'll see we get the same results. And then we can mix them. Say we want to get the count, right? Well, we can mix them and do a parentheses from name and names where name dot contains a select name okay that's going to execute but we surround that with parentheses and say dot count so there's our lambda and then count dot dump and we get four so that's it there will be a whole bunch of these put out uh, you, you can experiment with them um, do anything you want. I'll try to put the, uh, the queries in the description so that you can copy and paste them right into uh, your site here. I'm going to try to probably set up an FTP site on my server here at home uh, with CHI login, CHI password, uh, where you can go get these, these queries. Um, notice I've got them saved here in video one, basics uh, and organized. But I'll copy and paste them into... Uh, into the comments of this video so that you can copy and paste them in the link pad. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email is deanbortell, B-O-R-T-E-L-L, -L, at gmail.com, uh, or send me a personal message through this YouTube channel. I always respond. Uh, even to the hate mail, I respond to it. It's, it's all good. Um, and please take the time to click that subscribe button, support the channel, uh, feel free to share this video with your friends, and if you have a request for content, uh, something in the .NET world, just shoot me an email. I'll do what I can to accommodate it as quickly as I can. So as always, thank you for your time, thank you for your attention, and thank you for stopping by. We'll see you tomorrow.